Ready to go short track racing as the pace car is off from Richmond. We know it's Richmond night. We know the real life race is daytime. Who cares? We're underway anyways as I'm up in the booth with Fast Cook live on Twitch here. Now 160 laps of racing. Larson Elliott lead the way down into turn one stage. It's pretty straightforward here today in Richmond. 40, 40, 80 will take us to the end of 160 laps here around this raceway. Jay, uh, our first quote unquote real taste of short track racing. I feel like this season on the new package, Phoenix does count as a short track but it's not really a short track. This is the closest thing we've had to it this season. We have a heck of a swing to races on the way with Richmond, Bristol, Dirt, as well as Martinsville, but today, a good opportunity to get a taste of who's going to have the best short track racing package this season of these teams. I just want to say, before we uh, get into this, Gary, Braves have already hit a back-to-back -back, back -back home runs. They're going to win the World Series this year. Anyways, Mark Jr. you're done to the inside of Chase Elliott. Side-by-side, -side, Gary, we got a couple of, uh, well, actually, we were going to have a couple of new cars this weekend, but I see that we still have the same paint as previous, so uh, Chase Elliott, though, Gary, trying to make a pass again on Martin Truex Jr. Right now, I think we're, we're back here at Richmond again, and I think we could look for the same thing to happen now as we've seen uh, previous times here at Richmond, where we have a clean race, the first stage of the race, the first caution comes out, and it just goes chaos from there. So I think that this will wind up being one of those races again. Well, we've Austin Dillon as well. For Richard Childress Racing, having a good run. Daniel Suarez running in sixth place. As a Daniel Suarez fan, I can tell you this is not accurate at all. D Richmond, one of his worst tracks historically. I would be shocked if he finished in the top 20 in real life this weekend. Christopher Bell having a good run here as well. And how about Austin Cindric Jay running fourth place? He is at probably the biggest turnaround of anybody in this series, I think. Last season, he was terrible. Wasn't even close to being a threat for the playoffs. Ran terrible off season. He is currently in the top five in the standings. He's been putting together consistent top 10 runs, and here he is right now in Richmond as well, putting up the best run of any Penske drivers inside the top five. Ty Gibbs, another driver uh, that's had a very rough start to the season. So far in the background, crash there. The 31 of Justin Haley and the 21 of Harrison Burton. Burton's gonna get payback and put him up on his roof and the caution's gonna fly early on here in Richmond. Here's a look. The 31 dumps the 21 into turn three, turns them around. They both get into the wall and then the 21's gonna come back and get that 31 as they come through three and four. Burton, revenge on the 31 of Haley. Ross Chastain's had a rough start to this race as well on that number one machine. Uh, they're gonna try and make some more adjustments as this race goes on. The 21, of course, at the back of the grid and that 31 still holding on strong over this number five. Up and over and yeah, he, he got able to hold in front of our leader. He got flipped up and over, and now he's got the speed to, to win the race, apparently. And this nine car, looking pretty quick. And I think we're going to see Cindric be able to follow him through as well, Gary. This two car of us, the Cindric, looks really, really strong right now. Going to be possibly up in the third place if he's able to get to the inside of Truex here. Truex still on the outside of Chase Elliott, and Cindric going to try and look to take advantage of that. And then also maybe Daniel Suarez as well. So Truex, once he got put up to the outside, just obviously at a disadvantage up there. Kyle Busch in the background gets past the four of Kevin Harvick. Obviously this eight car, Gary, I think as the runs go on, this eight car gets a little bit stronger. Final lap picks off here in stage one. Very quick there. The nine, the two, the 19, they're all trying to get through. And here we have the battles for the final spots in the top 10 between actually... This is all for 10th place right here. Harvick's 11th, and actually, he's already slowing down. Oh, we got cars They're already way slow. wide. They're already reacting four to the caution. Four wide, stage one, finish. Never mind, not four wide, two wide, three wide. Three wide at the line. I mean, Kyle Busch gets eighth place. Larson wins stage one, but they... That didn't happen, but it's still, Gary, the trends have been stage two is where the chaos breaks out here, specifically in Richmond, so maybe just the actual stage two caution, not just any caution, so... We'll have to wait and see, but pretty single file in this restart once again. Not a lot of side by side. Here's a little bit back here with a couple of different, uh, with a couple of different rows of side by side. You got Blaney and Lar uh, Byron right there. You also, I think the 78 might have been a bit Something sideways there, there yeah. into turn four. Uh, the 17 of Chris Buescher having a solid run here in that car. He's another driver. We talked about drivers having a good seasons. Drivers having uh, rough seasons. He's certainly on the rough side of things. Now it's only the first Richmond race of the year, but stage points. And, well, overall points, of course, in this race, so, so important as we start to get a one race by one race closer to the playoffs. Now. Yeah, I was just going to say that he looks like he and Byron are both going forward. We saw them come out of the pit lane pretty much right near each other. They were both also, also uh, struggling outside the top 20 at stage number one. But in stage two, they got those adjustments made, Gary, and they have been moving their way forward. Obviously, still a lot of ground for them to make up time-wise and track position-wise. Uh, but once they get this caution to end stage number two, we'll have a... Uh, a good 80 laps left, I believe, in, in stage three. So uh, plenty of time for the 24 and the 12 to make to make their way forward. And especially, you see Byron right there behind that pack, Gary. He's catching him pretty fast, along with that 45 of Tyler Reddick as well. 
But up towards the front, it sees two hinder these two hinder drivers, Gary. I thought Cindric might have been able to get into the picture, but as this run has gone on longer, he's dropped back to the 19 of Truex, and the 9 and the 5 have driven away from each other. At this point, I'm not sure which car is faster, because the passing seems to be pretty uh, pretty rough up towards the front, but this 9 car is certainly pushing this 5 car, Kyle Larson, and they're both just driving away from the rest of this field. As we approach the final lap, Truex, here's the chance for him to pick up an extra point in that number 2. Last time we saw a three wide on the on the final lap of stage number one. Might see a three wide on the final lap of stage number two as well. The wide flag is out for this for, or for this second stage. Kyle Larson now pulled out a little bit of a gap on uh, on Chase Elliott right here though. Truex almost slid up into the side of Austin Cedric down the back straightaway for the final time in stage number two. Gary, these two still side by side, and Christopher Bell wants a piece of this as well. Larson wins stage two over Elliott, side by side to the line in the background. Truex at the last second gets the number two of Cindric for third. Pelé setting himself up, which could be very important for this pit stop right here, uh, as this could be the last guaranteed pit stop under caution, at least. This is a repeat of what we saw last time, and oh, the 20 car, uh, Bell, who's had a great day, Long is going to get a hugely, hugely awful pit stop, and he is still waiting. The 8 car looks slow again as well. The 24 definitely lost some ground, and wow, Jay, that is embarrassing. If you're the 20, you run top 5 wow. all night long. And one stage remains here from Richmond Raceway. Kyle Larson has dominated the race so far. However, in stage two, it was a little bit different. He had Chase Elliott filling up his rear view mirror the whole time through right to the end. So can he hold on in stage three? We know there's a pit stop on the way. May that be under caution? Trends tell me right off the bat it's going to be under green flag conditions. In the background, Chase Elliott, or sorry, not Chase Elliott, Kyle Busch already under attack there from the 41. Oh, what's happening up here? We got the 14 of Briscoe Whoa. in the grass as they head down towards turn what is this mess we have suddenly three come upon? wide oh yeah and they're all detached from the Jarvis in front of them yeah. that's likely because they've been three wide and just running really slow Ryan Blaney with Kyle Busch right there two wide the only break out of that the 41 of Priest still three wide with Brad Kozlowski Alex Bowman up on the high side losing a lot of ground there Gary they've been three wide for this last lap at least and still losing ground the 14's coming into the pit, so my guess is he had maybe an issue. You see as well, Larson's approaching the back of the 78 of McLeod, who's been off the pace here now, but he ended up winning the race after being non-existent uh, for 99.5% of that whole uh, event. There, Elliott's into the pit lane already, Jay, as uh, that's... That's this um, is super quite early. a bit early, as we know a fuel runs about 60 or so laps. Why is the 9 pitting this early in the stage? You have to wonder if there's maybe an issue going on with the number 9, and that is, I mean, an absolute blessing for Kyle Larson if that's the case. He can certainly make it to the end of the he race could. from here, so it may be a strategy call to get him on some new tires right now, see if they can outpace Kyle Larson, but the thing is, Gary, they're going to have to go over 40 laps on those tires while Kyle Larson will eventually pit later in this race. If Kyle Larson pits later in this race and gets on those fresh tires, he could then use that to his advantage to go back and pass Chase Elliott. So I'm not sure that... I think this is too early for the 9 car. He's obviously sitting there for a while, too. There might be an issue. some kind of issue to this 9 car. He's, he's sitting there for a long time. I think Chase Elliott has had some kind of there issue. There he goes. And has obviously lost multiple laps and had, the, had a very long pit stop. Definitely something going on with the 9 now. As uh, You have to wonder, Jay, if there's enough laps he could of course run really quick but as well passing is going to be an issue so uh as he rejoins right here alongside the 11 of denny hamlin suarez is again trying to pass uh that 78 but if nine car chase elliott finally gets to the by daniel suarez and and blew, yeah blew right by him obviously these fresh tires are helping gary but something they're just not able to pass very well because obviously the chase elliott is much faster than the, than the 99 but it took him a long time to get around and back at the 78 of whoa the 78 of bj mcleod now he's on the right on the bumper of the 19 car of truex if he goes to the outside which he actually is wow he's pass him on the outside he is <laughs> That, why didn't he do that earlier? The mail, but obviously, got a lot of work to do. As a, oh, maybe, well, he tried the outside. That's uh, what he just did on the 19 of Truex. And, yep, I he's mean, look at around that. Him. Jesus, he, he's going to say, see you later. So now it's, Elliot has to drive as quick as he possibly can. The only chance he has is if he can somehow be leading once Larson comes out and just make it as hard as possible for that number five car to be able to overtake them. That's the only chance he has because Jay Zvino, if, if he comes up behind the five, zero chance of winning and he's just going to fall back like a rock to the 19 and the two. And he's going to get rolling easily, Jay. So it's not even going to be a contest here. Now it's just trying to get out and not have any issues. Yeah, now he's going to try and get out of the pit lane without being around any traffic. There is a 23 and a three as they go by, but it's clear track behind them. We look for the nine car of Chase Elliott. There he is. Nowhere near Gary, not even in the picture. Oh, there you go. You're right there. He is but look at the cars. Cars. So, yeah, this 9 car, Chase Elliott, 
has gotten no hope at this point. Also, likely still a lap down to Kyle Larson, too. I oh, think. my God. It, it is for position, and the 9 does hold on, like you said, Gary. So, you have to wonder, uh, is there enough in that car? Uh, as you can see, Larson, though, he is... Uh, gonna cycle out the leader as Cindric is just now leaving the pits and you're gonna watch that 9 and the 19 below right on pass But we'll see if him staying on a little bit longer gives him the advantage he needs But now I mean the problem uh. is he's gonna lose a spot at Denny Hamlin Hopefully for Truex the 14 does that right there easy pass But maybe easy pass not past him just yet there he goes. Now he gets to the inside and gets past him. This 14 car gonna hold up Chase Elliott. That might allow Denny oh. Hamlin to get around Gary Hamlin. Oh boy Hamlin now losing a ton of ground there on the outside. The two, if Cindric's going to slip up the inside here as they come through to cross the stripe now. As, oh, we got the caution is out here in Richmond, actually, as we cross the line. And the yellow has flown as Kyle Larson has a 5.6 second gap. And, oh, we got Ty Dillon as well just now coming out of the pit lane. Jay, we wondered if the caution was going to come out, and there it is. But Kyle Larson, even if they pit under caution... Kyle Larson's got such a massive gap. Larson leading back to the green flag has a bunch of lap cars in between him and second place of Martin Truex Jr. Jay, the main thing we have to watch out for there on this restart, the five takes off tremendously, but that nine, we have to keep a big eye on Chase Elliott. He's going to have a lot of hungry drivers all over the back end of that number nine car who's on way older tires than everybody. Only problem so far, Gary, is when we start, we've seen it be really calm and, and not have any chaos happen so far. But this is to the end of the race. There is coming around this time to five laps to go. These guys have got to not hold behind Chase Elliott, who they know is slower right now. And he's done a good job on this restart. But here goes the inside of the nine. Danny Hamlin, he's going to bring a whole train with him. Here comes Daniel Suarez. Jay, that's worst case scenario. The nine, you were just trying to hold the bottom. And now he has failed at that. And there goes the two trying to slip into that oh, hole. Boy. Logano says no way. Teammates. Teammates get into it a little bit there, but that was a good move. They put Chase Elliott at the top of three wide. They both get by because Lyles get to the inside now. As they head down this back straight away, yeah, things are looking pretty good for that number five of Larson here. He's not even trying. Down into three and four for the final time. One win on the season so far. It's about to be two as he exits turn four. Kyle Larson wins in Richmond. Martin Truex Jr. holds on for second. Hamlin Suarez as well as Logano, the top five. Elliott holds back a bunch of cars there for ninth or eighth place just over ninth and tenth place goes to kevin harvick and as well a rebound day for chastain manages to get up into 14th place a season high uh run for ty gibbs there in 16th place and you gotta say disappointment for kyle bush jay as he finishes in 24th uh, after running you know outside just outside of the top 10 about 11th 12th for the majority of the night just not the day he was looking for an rcr in general 24th, 25th, a rough night for that team.